So today I wanted to talk about why you should stop drinking alcohol or at least slow down and you know only drink it once in a while or on occasion. I'm gonna give the disclaimer that I do for you know a lot of these videos and say that if you're the age where you can legally buy alcohol and drink legally, you're old enough to make your own decisions. I'm not here to tell you what to do, I'm not your parents, so feel free to make your own decisions. So I don't drink alcohol. I've had sips of beer and I hated it. And I was like, how do people even drink this? From what I've been told, it's an acquired taste, whatever that means. And I've never had any hard liquor like vodka or whiskey or you know anything like that because to be honest, I'm not sure how much um, alcohol I can handle. And to me, being drunk seems inconvenient. Obviously, I know you don't have to, um, like you don't start drinking with the intent to get drunk, right? But it's like, you know, you're slurring your speech, you can't walk properly, people have to like carry you, and it just seems inconvenient to me. But again, that's just me. One big thing for me when it comes to alcohol is, you know, why would I have to intoxicate myself to enjoy myself? Like, do people not enjoy life or gatherings or wherever they're at as it is? It's just, I don't know. And you know, on top of all that, it's so expensive. Like wine is expensive, beer is expensive, every type of alcohol is expensive. And you know, I had no idea how much it actually cost until, you know, recently. Like a pack of 24 beers is like $50. Like, I guess when you actually break it down, it isn't that expensive. It's like $2 a can or $2 a bottle or, you know, whatever it is. But for me, it's just not economically convenient. But I don't know, I just don't see anything positive about alcohol. It's expensive, it harms your health, it intoxicates you. And you know, sure you can say drinking pop or eating things with lots of sugar are bad for you, but it's not anywhere near as bad as, al as alcohol, you know, that I think. Now, I've seen alcohol ruin marriages, ruin careers, make people homeless, make people neglect their kids, neglect their wife or husband. Like, it's terrible. Like, that was one of the factors that caused my mom and dad to get divorced. My dad couldn't control his drinking. He was a huge alcoholic. My mom would tell him to stop and then he would hit her. And one day she just got fed up and she fought for a divorce from him. And I can't even lie, like even I was scared. So I couldn't even imagine how she was feeling, right? She was probably scared. Your husband's abusing you. You have a little four year old child and you know, she divorced him. So she was a single mom with a four, five, six year old kid. And on top of that, we didn't have that much money. My dad took all of their savings because they had a joint bank account and he ran up all these credit cards and he just left. I haven't seen my dad since I was like six or something like that. I was supposed to go to his house on the weekends like most kids do, you know, when you're with your mom for one weekend and then you're with your dad for another weekend and it kind of, you know, alternates, but he never came to pick me up. Never called, never came back, never did anything. Funny story, I remember uh, one day after my mom and dad got divorced, uh, I was supposed to go out with my dad that weekend and I was supposed to stay at his house that weekend. And you know, he called and he said we were gonna go see a movie and this and that. And I don't remember what movie it was, uh, I was like six or whatever. And to make a long story short, I fell asleep waiting for him and I'm still waiting for him to this day. That's the problem I have with alcohol. I'm not sure what happened to him, if he quit drinking or if he didn't or if he's alive or if he died, I literally have no idea. There was this guy that lived in my building that used to go drinking with him and he said last he heard he went back home or wherever, but that's as far as my knowledge goes. So what are you gonna do? But you know, if you're coming home from work and you're stressed out or you're only going for one drink after work, that's no way to live. Right? You're trying to drink away your problems or forget them through a bottle and that's never going to help you. All you're going to do is develop a tolerance and then you're going to end up having to drink more to feel better. And then even that feeling better feeling, you know, it goes away. So you're going to have to spend more money to feel better. So you're wasting three very valuable things. You're wasting time, you're wasting money and you're wasting your health. Like people don't understand, there are literally thousands of people's lives who have been ruined by alcohol. They lose their job or they lose their house or like in my case, my dad lost my mom and I. Luckily, I turned out half decent despite being in a shit situation, but not everybody's gonna be as lucky as I am. In a lot of cases, if someone's parents have problems, whether that's with alcohol or smoking or even eating, their kids are likely to have that problem also because they're around it all the time. If you go home and your dad is drinking, you might say, hmm, let me try that. And I'm not saying you will, but you know, there's a higher possibility versus if you had parents that didn't drink. 
But then again, at the same time, I feel like if you have parents that are super strict, you're more likely to rebel and go and drink and smoke because you want to prove to your parents that, you know, you can do what you want. You're more likely to rebel, right? I mean, parenting is super difficult to be honest and really and truly, I respect every parent out there because it's really not easy. But alcohol is a slippery slope. Like one day you're at a party and your friends are telling you to, to try this drink and then all of a sudden you find yourself itching for it and you're going to the store to get some and then you're drinking in the morning before going to work or maybe you're drinking at work or after work and a few years go by and you know you're trying to hide it from your wife or your husband or your kids and then that's when you know you have big problems. I know it's super difficult to quit drinking but you know you have to think about the future. Think about the things you can change. I uploaded a video a while ago called The Price of Inaction. You can watch it up here. And in that video, I talk about one question that Jordan Peterson asked. What's the price of inaction? What's the price of you telling yourself that you're gonna stop drinking next week or next month or next year? Then, you know, say next year you don't stop because you gave a half-ass effort, let's be honest. Then all of a sudden you're three years older and you're still drinking. You spent all that money, you wasted three years and you're still in the same spot. Like, what's the price of that? Listen, I know quitting drinking is hard. Quitting any addiction is hard, but you have to think, what if I don't quit? Sure, you might be okay now, but you know, what future health problems might you have, right? When you read that alcohol can cause antisocial behaviors, anxiety, cravings, depression, irritability, panic, sleep disorders, like what does that tell you? When you read that one in three people that drink alcohol allegedly have depression, or that one in three people allegedly have high blood pressure, or that one in six people allegedly have liver disease, what does that tell you? If you're 25 or 30 or whatever age you are right now, do you want to have those things? Do you want to be one of those people that are constantly sick and you have to go to the hospital or the doctor or whatever specialist because something could have been avoided? I'm not saying going out with your friends for a drink once in a while is bad. I'm not saying you have to never drink again. Like you can do that by all means, go ahead. I'm not going to sit here and tell you to, you know, stay inside and be a monk and Pray for your whole life, but just know your limit. Just like they tell you when you're gambling, know your limit. Yes, your friends might make fun of you. Yes, people might ask, oh, how come you don't drink? Yes, it's gonna feel weird to slow down or quit alcohol because we live in a society that seems like it's living on it. Or, you know, people drinking their life away on Friday and Saturday just to be pissed off on Sunday is no way to live. If you hate your job, look for a new one. If you hate where you live, look for somewhere else to live. If you hate things about your life, change them. But I can promise you that trying to drink away your problems isn't gonna solve anything. Now, say me and my girl go out somewhere and people are like, oh, do you want a drink? You know, for me, if you give me like a ice cold Coke, that's it, I'm done, I'm good. I can have that for the rest of the night, like I'm all good. But then when people ask me why I don't drink, I say, you know what? It ruined my mom and dad's marriage. I saw what it did, that's why I don't. And you know, I'm just being honest. And you know, if your friends make fun of you because oh, you're not gonna drink, they're not your friends. Speaking of that, you can watch that video right up here. But you know, let me end the video with this. I told my girl that after my mom died, if I was an alcoholic, I'd be dead right now. That was the worst thing that I've ever felt in my life. And you know, trust me when I say, if I was a drinker, these videos would not be here. I know, you know, some people start after something bad happens to them and that's, to be honest, that's probably one of the top five worst things you can do. If someone that's an alcoholic is watching this right now or if you're on the verge of being one or whatever your story is, please consider cutting back. Reach out to a friend if you have trouble, reach out to your grandma, reach out to anybody, even me, but talk to somebody about it. If you just went through a breakup and you find yourself turning to the bottle, if your mom just died and you find yourself turning to the bottle, if your fish just died and you find yourself turning to the bottle, think twice before doing it. And you know, I know it's the easy thing to do, right? You might think, oh, you know, how big of a deal can it be? I'll just have a little bit. But like I said, it can be a very, very slippery slope. And if you drink and you don't have a problem and you go out with your friends once in a while or you have a drink on Saturday night once a week, that's great. I'm really happy for you. But if you do drink and you think it's becoming a problem or if it already is a problem and if you need any resources, I'll link them all down below in the description. There'll be subreddits and 
other resources down there. So, you know, feel free to use them. And remember that, you know, it's a long road ahead, but if you're watching this video, you've already completed the first step, which is admitting that there's a problem. Remember that sobriety delivers everything that alcohol promised. And as always, thanks for watching.